here in France is being branded the Green Strauss-Kahn. French Member of Parliament Denis Baupin accused by at least eight women inside his party of sexual harassment with accusations that range from lewd text messages in meetings to groping. A tweet of his on International Women's Day proved the final straw for women who fumed at his alleged hypocrisy. They decided to break the silence on a man who has now resigned his post as one of six deputy speakers of parliament, all the while fighting the charges and staying on as a lawmaker. Bopin runs in high circles with a wife who was expelled as Green Party leader when she recently accepted the post of housing minister in François Hollande's socialist government. We'll hear her reaction and look at a manifesto published in a left-leaning newspaper Libération calling on political parties from across the spectrum to break the silence on sexual harassment and crack down on unacceptable behavior. The question is, how do you do it? Are gender parity quotas resolving the issue? And uh, how specifically French is the problem in a nation where notions of hierarchy matter more than in most Western nations, in both the workplace and the high halls of power? Today in the France 24 debate, we're talking about uh, people being named and shamed when it comes to sexual harassment. And with us, Annie Lamer, uh, she is a regional councillor for the Paris area from the Green Party and one of those accusing Denis Baupin. We'll hear your story in a minute. Many thanks for being with us. Bonsoir. Also joining us, uh, Corinne Narasigan, spokesperson for the Socialist Party, former member uh, of the National Assembly, who will perhaps tell us more about her own experience. And France 24's Lila Jacinto, who's been following this story uh, for us. The France 24 debate, where you could join the conversation on Facebook and Twitter, our hashtag F24Debate. Just to remind our viewers of this story, Denis Baupin, not just any member of parliament, he's a long-standing Green Party stalwart who was the powerful deputy mayor of Paris before becoming one of those six deputy speakers of parliament. Shirley Sitbon has more. This tweet is what pushed eight women to come forward. It shows male politicians wearing lipstick to denounce sexual harassment. One of them is Denis Baupin, the man who had allegedly assaulted them. The controversy is the latest of several involving French politicians. Once again, officials are accused of not having done anything. One of the Green Party's former leaders is Beaupin's own wife, now France's housing minister. She swears she had never heard anyone accuse her husband, but some say otherwise. When we were told at our national convention that Denis Beaupin had been accused, we were deeply shocked. But then Emmanuel Coste said this isn't the place to discuss this issue. French politics have long been mired in sexual scandals, which usually remained hidden. Women were too scared to testify, fearing no one would believe them. In May 2011, things started to change. The then IMF chief Dominique Strauss-Kahn, one of France's most popular politicians, was arrested in New York on suspicion of sexually assaulting a hotel mate. Several testimonies surfaced, describing DSK's aggressive behavior towards women. Other scandals followed. Former minister Georges Tron is due to be tried for rape. Finance minister Michel Sapin is suspected of improper conduct, which he denies. Harassment happens in all parties, and party leaders don't have the appropriate reaction. According to the parties, they don't have to do anything because it's the court's job to rule on these matters. Some MPs say it's about time to take the problem seriously. They call on Beaupin to resign from his parliament seat. Well, he denies the allegations. Annie Lamer, in your case, uh, these are accusations that you've lodged over an incident that happened uh, in the late 1990s. Uh, can you tell us what happened? Well, what happened was, it was in the late 90s, I think it was 1999 to, to 2001, and there was a, the European election, can say, and uh, uh, Denis Boupin was uh, a candidate, I was working alongside him, and uh, I was working at the Green headquarters at the time, and Denis Boupin was someone who, uh, who was uh, always acting with urgency, and he would always um, be saying, 
sending messages and making invitations, saying come to this soiree. And I remember one particular soiree that I did go along uh, with some other friends uh, um, so that he would stop pestering me. Um, and uh, there was uh, there was one evening where I was alone with him in the office. I, I put the documents that he wanted on the desk and uh, he he came after me. I tried to escape and in the end we were uh, we were running around the office. It might actually uh, seem a bit ludicrous, but we, he was actually chasing me right around the office. Uh, at one point, uh, he, we stopped. He was right in front of me, and I said, listen, Denis, um, this, this is crazy. You can't chase me around the, the office like this. It's not going to happen. And that just ended there, and then I, we both went home. And then the next day, I came into the office, and I uh, said hello to everybody, as I do every morning. And I noticed that Denis didn't respond to me. He, he just completely ignored me. And uh, it's true that I did tease him a bit, saying, and saying, ooh, if someone doesn't want to sleep with you, you sulk, do you? You don't speak to me anymore, is that right? And he, he said to me, uh, pointing his finger at me, he said, well, you'll never have a job in this, uh, in this party. And so I thought that was really quite, quite shocking. I didn't speak out at the time. I kept it to myself. Uh, and I actually, it took a few years before I could talk about it. Uh, um, but later, I didn't hide it within the party. I told it to other members of the party every now and then. And I said, oh, you know, he did this or he did that. And whenever I did talk about it, other people would say, oh, yeah, 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 that's kind of well known. And so I didn't really hide it. And I was actually um, an employee of the, the Paris city government at the time. And uh, so, you know, these things weren't known. And, and, and in general, people um, people didn't know what was going on. But if they really looked, they would see that the two of us weren't conversing. We'd meet at meetings, but we wouldn't address you know one another directly. Um, every now and then we'd say hello. But it took me a long time to get over it, honestly. Um, the uh, uh, talking about it today, is it something painful or is it a relief? Well, I think it is a relief. I think that the the pain has subsided over time. Pers my, my personal pain, no, that hasn't subsided. I, I think it's actually good for me to be able to talk about it, but... Above all, I want this to free up other women so that they feel that they can talk about these kinds of incidents. Okay, so talk us through it here. Um, there's this tweet sent out on March the 8th, International Women's Day, that we saw in that, in that report. Uh, how, how does it come about that you're one of those who steps forward and, and, and speaks out? Hello. Well, in fact, that tweet that you've mentioned, well, there were several of, of us who saw the picture of uh, Denis Bopin with the, uh, with the lipstick on and we thought, how far is he going to go? This is, this is crazy, especially when you know what he is capable of. We, we thought that this was, uh, this was beyond him. We thought, come on, he's a relatively intelligent person. He, he knows better than to do this. And at that particular point, uh, well... Uh, um, there were two of us who said no. We can't. We can't m maintain our silence anymore. And uh, it was the reactions that we saw and and what we saw going on that actually rekindled the pain inside us. Uh, and remember that the journalists' uh, investigation into this actually was already ongoing and had been for some time. It's not like we came forward and 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 said uh, and said, hey, guess what? Denis Bopin has done this. It was the journalist who came towards us because it was already starting uh, this moment was already starting on Facebook, on the social networks, uh, and essentially it was the, the journalists who came to us. Um, so it's not as if I was trying to get some personal vendetta and saying, oh yeah, you know, Dennis is a really bad guy. It's not about revenge. It's not about vengeance. Uh, but we, we were shocked to think, oh my God, he's learned nothing from this. He's, I mean, this was beyond us, honestly. This dates back to, uh, to the late 1990s and quite visibly, it's, it's still going on. Corinne Rassiga, your, your reaction to Annie Lamer's story of being chased around an office table by Denis Bopin. I am speechless, speechless because it, it does sound completely ridiculous and at the same time I, I, can, I do believe that it can happen and uh, um, it's very shocking, of course. 
Um, and fortunately, I think, well, I think we've made a lot of progress in terms of sexism in France in general, but I think the, the political world is a very specific one where it's much more difficult for the truth to come out. M much more difficult? What? Why is that? Um, I think because uh, the the pressures are are different because there are um, the, the idea of, of loyalty is much stronger. Uh, the idea of it, either for the victims or for the other people who know um, is there is this this idea that you don't want to damage the image of your party because you believe in in the ideals that your your party uh, is fighting for, and um, and also um, I think. Uh, contrary to in other areas of, of life when that happens, if you do come out with the truth, if you, if you do choose to speak out, you know you're going to be all over, the, all over the news and that can be um, that can be very difficult for the victims because it's it's already a, a difficult choice uh, to choose to speak out. We, we, we already know um, that sometimes it can take months and years for a victim to choose to speak out. Um, which is why also we... we uh, and here, Annie uh, we Lamer here s saying that yes. she feels relief uh, at the fact that uh, they're able to go public Yes, with it. and I, I think this is, this is why we've extended the, the, the prescription, uh, the, the time limit Statute. on the statu statutory uh, limits. We've, 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 we've done that already. Uh, we've increased uh, the judicial arsenal uh, already in France in 2012. Um, the, the label law that's being... Uh, discussed. There's also new measures in there because we know that we need to empower the victims uh, and we, we need to make sure that they know that they can speak out and they will be heard. When you were elected to parliament, did friends warn you, hey, watch out for this guy or that guy? No, I, I'm, I don't think it was known maybe outside of the Green Party at all. I no, 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 but I'm saying so. in just in general. Oh, in general, well, I, you, you don't have to be warned. I mean, the, the atmosphere of sexism is there pretty much right away. You can tell. Um, it's. I mean, it's not everyone. There's, there's lots of lots of men who behave absolutely appropriately. What is it? Sort of a locker but, room sort of mentality. Yes, there is that. There is that because unfortunately, um, there's only about a quarter of the National Assembly which is female, mm -hmm. and um, and it's very new, uh, and it's mostly left wing. Uh, left-wing uh, uh, members uh, who, are, who are female. Um, and, and, um, and so there is still this locker room mentality. We know when you speak and you're a woman, um, you're going to be interrupted a lot more. You're going to be uh, um, talked over a lot more. Um, you, you know that there, there might be remarks and you, and you kind of, you change your behavior. You mind how you dress. Uh, you are careful not to uh, do anything that might uh, be interpreted as an... Because you, you had worked in the private sector, right, in yes, the past. Yes, yes. So when you come to the National Assembly, you, you have to pay more attention to the way you dress, most notably? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I, and I, I worked in the U.S. for a very long time. Uh, I mean, there is there is sexual harassment also in the U.S. There is sexism also in the U.S. But in the, in the corporate world, uh, the laws are much stricter, and the and so and also the political correctness is much stronger, and and so you don't feel as conscious uh, of of this issue uh, in in the corporate world. I think it's getting better in France today, but it's still it's still a long way away from North America. Okay, last year, Bopin married the then head of the Green Party, Emmanuel Koss. She's since been sacked from her post for joining the government. This Tuesday, she told public news radio station France Info that she found out about the allegations, like everyone else, when she opened the newspapers on Monday morning. I was shocked as a woman, as a wife, as a mother and as a minister because the issue of violence against women has been a key part of my political struggle for many years, and I've never made any compromise on this matter. I found out about the sexual harassment accusations yesterday, just as you did, and I'll be honest with you, when it comes to issues like these, there can be no room for ambiguity, as these are extremely serious accusations. And if these accusations turn out to be true, then it will be decided before the court, and likewise if these claims are false. Lina Jacinto, uh, Emmanuel Kass says for now she stands by her husband. 
Yes, but, you know, and we've seen this pattern, if you look at the dynamics of it, of a political sex scandal, and then you have a, a very competent, independent wife who, who suddenly has to handle this crisis, whether it's Hillary Clinton or Dominique Sarstraskan's wife, Anne Sinclair. Uh, so as... Uh, Nobody wants to be in this position. This is a terrible position to be in. Uh, it's still too early to say, you know, I mean, initially, I would say she, this was a very good statement. You know, she, of course, has to say that the courts are going to decide what exactly happened. And until such time, she, she will support her spouse. Uh, but it's very much for the courts to decide. Um, and, it, and it is really, you know, one of the things that, that, that you talked about, loyalty. Uh, you know, this, this actually, uh, his wife's... Uh, statement we would we were discussing this in the in the edit meeting this morning and uh, you know looking at this pattern of very powerful women in government she's she was in the same party as him what do they do when you know, where do you stand as a wife or as uh, as a, as a female with, with with gender sensitivity and i always advise caution on this you know because every case is different uh, in the case of dominique strauss his you know his wife uh, defended him and stood by him until such time as the case closed and then they divorce. Hillary Clinton, for whatever reason, these are private matters. Uh, but, you know, this, this goes to show how these, how these scandals affect everyone, parties, families, wives, everybody. Uh, and Anila Mer, do you believe Emmanuel Kuss when she says she only discovered this Monday morning? I really couldn't say. I really don't know. I think it's such a complex issue for Emmanuel. I have a lot of uh, uh, good feelings towards her, and so I think she's in a really tricky situation. And uh, um, one of my apprehensions when I decided to speak out was actually her reaction. And uh, there was this SMS on uh, Monday morning uh, in which I said to her, look, I'm sorry, I, I had to do what I've done. And um, you've probably, yeah, it's probable that she'd heard something, but uh, between a rumor on the one hand uh, and uh, and what appears in the in the papers and and with uh, and with uh, you know stepping down from his post, then there's a huge get. And remember, things are tough. It's dog eat dog in in political parties, uh, and uh, she would be uh, perfectly within her right not to believe what's been said because it might not uh, fit with. Her her image, um, I really can't answer. I don't know. I think it's such a tough, tough time for her. I, uh, I, I really don't want to uh, exacerbate anything for her. And quite honestly, that's not actually any of my business. Uh, I am... Um, uh, I'm uh, really only able to focus on the facts about what happened with uh, Denis Baupin. Um, I'm on good terms with Emmanuel Locos, uh, and uh, there were times when I was really uncomfortable with her because I wanted uh, to say it but knew that I couldn't, you know, because of what it would do point. for her and her kids. We're going to pick up on that point when we come back. Stay with us. You're watching the France Vanquette debate.